Hey everybody, this is Stormy with the capital Z. Welcome to another Warcraft 3 audio commentary. This time around, we are having a game on Terrena Stand, the newer version, Terrena Stand LV. It is going to be between Agent, who is spawning as the red human player. He is from Russia. He will be playing up against Starshaped, who hails from Sweden. And Starshaped will be spawning as the TL Night Elf on the top left. Night Elf is human on Terrena Stand. Let's go. Let's see how this match turns out. As both of the players are putting down their startup buildings, altar, barracks building, food building, moonwell, and farm respectively. It seems to me like the uh, Night Elf player wants to go for this green camp. The usual, nothing too that special. Uh, although Agent over here seems to be going for a kind of an interesting base layout. He's not going for the traditional close-ended base just yet. He does have two openings. He's closing the middle uh, middle pathways from where you can send your units and stuff. Archmage, the usual choice. And what do you have here? Alright, this game is already interesting. It's going to be Archmage versus Warden. And let's see how these players do it on Turin stand uh, we got agent covering up his base on the other side now and uh, making his footman and stuff although I would be uh, I would rather cover this side up than that side but well hey it's their preference considering the fact that you're actually cutting the lumber on this side with more peasants well, let's see maybe he'll uh, change his uh, change that spot I guess one wisp coming in to do some scouting footman gonna follow it a bit wisp uh, will be able to escape rather easily I won't uh, really worry about that wisp too much it's gonna stick around perhaps the human player not uh, doesn't want it to get too much information and uh, both of the players now starting to creep at this orange camp uh, warden versus archmage it's been a while since we've seen a warden warden is really exciting and oh no gotta be Careful. Did you get the... Oh, star-shaped. You missed the experience. That was bad. That was so bad. The archer was in there. Uh, it had lightning shield. And oh, no. You lo lost the archer as well. Not good. This is not good at all for star-shaped. You lost a good bit of experience from this uh, orange camp, which you want to creep out at the early get-go. At the same time, you lost your archer. So that's a really, really sloppy start for star-shaped. As far as Agent goes, I think he's on for a rather better start. Uh, I only see like two footmen here. One is back there and uh, some peasants are here. So he'd probably back them out. I'm not sure if he lost any units or not. But uh, he definitely did not lose anything on the experience part. Starshape did. Starshape lost a good amount of experience. He lost a good chunk of experience as uh, one of the creeps or I think two of the creeps were taken out by either the lightning shield or hit by the ancient of wars you know ancient of wars a building so kills by towers don't count as experience points and it uh, seems like starship was taking a bit of a risky move here he sent out his shadow priest the forest troll shadow priest to do some harassment and it seems like he's actually doing a pretty good job trying to hit that footman and the footman is very very low here comes the warden warden blinking in shadow strike shadow strike but I don't think he managed to get the kill on that unit, despite of that shadow kill, uh, shadow strike. He didn't manage to get the item. Sentry ward, sentry ward being dropped at a very, very good location. One, a few, one or two peasants being picked up. Uh, priest just, just died, shadow priest, and uh, the warden now following those uh, workers. The worker is gonna go back to the base. He does have enough mana to cast few more shadow strikes, and those are going to deal a lot of damage. Uh, I believe he lost about three peasants over here, which is a pretty good gain for the Warden. Although it's not level 3 just yet. Human players already reached level 3, which makes him slightly ahead. There is a second, uh, second Shadow Troll Priest over here. Human player struggling to complete this camp over here. And okay, that's where he's getting it from. There's a third Shadow Priest now for the Nidal player. Despite of the human player having a farm station right over there, he may have uh, bought it himself and maybe not let the Nidal player have it. But I guess that wasn't his. That just wasn't a part of his plan. Nidal player now 
well, this, this I would say that this is kind of a poison IV technique. I don't think I'm not sure whether that kill counted. I'm not. Uh, I wasn't all that uh, close on the warden to check it up, whether he gained experience by. What I mean to say is I don't know whether the footman got killed by Shadow Strike or the Elemental, as the human player did try to did try to uh, deny it. There goes another little Shadow Strike, and uh, he's going right after the footman. Human player tactic. Uh, that was a nice little tactical retreat, and uh, the Warden is down to pretty low hit points. He wants to go back there. The, he wants to get that Warden back into the base, suck up some Moon Juice, and there's no Tier 2. Human player already at Tier 2, and uh, we've got a Blacksmith coming in. He'll probably... Uh, he's probably gonna drop some Arcane Sanctums and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, Star Shaped is up to, but he's actually going for an expansion. Okay. That's rather surprising. Human player getting an alchemist as a second hero. Right off the bat, getting a few items. Gauntlet of Ogre Strength, Mantle of Intelligence, and keeping the Archmage away so that the alchemist will suck up some experience. Second uh, Sentry Ward being dropped by the Nidal player. That's going to be helping him out a bit. And uh, we have a little lag over here. Okay, it's fine now. Uh, lagging again. I don't know what the hell was that about. So, uh, the Warden will be reaching level 3 after this uh, creep. And uh, Human Player will be re reaching uh, level 2 with the Alchemist. Alchemist already got a really good chunk. Claws of Attack plus 6, Ring of Protection, and... Uh, what else do we have? Potion of Greater Invulnerability. Oh, well, that's not greater. That's just Potion of Invulnerability, not lesser. We also have uh, one of the same things with the Warden. Warden actually got... Uh, Belt of Giant, Slipper of Agility, and uh, this one is useless. Cloak of Shadows, light. it can already cloak, so a second cloak is n really not useful. Tree of Life is ready, and uh, this is going to be an attempt to expand for the human, uh, I mean, say the Nidal player. Uh, Shadow Strike on that Alchemist. Agent retreating back, and uh, oh, nice, I really like this. Heal Spray being used, and it completely negated the effect of that Shadow Strike. He can just wait a bit and ha cast another one of those healing sprays and wow, I didn't know that was possible but we are seeing this in this game. Shadow Strike on Alchemist, no use. No use at all if the Alchemist is going for heal spray, which is a rather likely choice. Going in there with the Archmage and uh, he's, although he was getting hit by the creeps, he got himself a nice little scroll of healing. That's going to be useful. I believe he bought the dust just now as well. Going after the Huntresses. Human player is dominating. This is not. Uh, this is definitely not in the favor of the Nidal player, as he has invested a lot in trying to expand over here, and he will most likely lose this tree of life if the human player is. Uh, well, human player definitely wants to take that take that out, using heal spray more and more, and uh, heal spray can. Heal spray is working really well in negating the effect of that shadow strike. Although he did manage to lose that foot. Uh, I, I, it's not a footman, sorry. That's a scroll berserker. Now backing out with those priests. And he's, yeah, this is what I was talking about. He wants to go after that tree of life. Tree of life now struggling to stay alive. Uh, here come a few huntresses. The cavalry has arrived for the night elf player. Night elf player going in for the kill. Trying to uh, take down those uh, units one by one. He did manage to lose one of the huntresses during that time. Uh, tree of life is going to be used as a... It's going to be used as a battle unit, I was about to say, but no. It seems like he's going to back it out a bit. He wants to plan that firmly right now, unless and until he, he's going to lose it. He lost the Tree of Life, and I don't know how well the Nidal player can recover from something like this. He, uh, he uh, That was a really, really big investment lost. He can still do a real good Tier 1 push. He is uh, getting his Tier 2 ready. Maybe he can uh, get some glaive throwers. Although, uh, as as much as people like to consider them as like w the worst siege unit in the game, they actually have proven themselves worthy. I have seen the use of them, and uh, the Nidal player. Well, he still has a fighting chance. The Nidal player, star shaped, still has a fighting chance. Really great gameplay by the Nidal player. When he's not having enough number of units, you just get those units out of the mercenary camp. This is something what human players tend to do, rather. And it's really good to see this uh, being this kind of a gameplay by Nidals as well. 
now the human player uh, may want to concentrate on getting level 3 on that alchemist but he's gonna creep uh, that camp together with the archmage warden uh, has a staff of preservation that's gonna be really really useful as he has already hit tier 2 starship was able to buy the tier 2 items from his shop uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out that we have like three priests over here man that is actually a big number of that is a I mean, that's a lot of healing, you know. That is actually a lot of healing. And uh, Nidal player is ha actually having a kind of a partial human army with, uh, within those priests. A nice little blink over there by the warden. Uh, it's nice to see blink and shadow strike being used in this uh, matchup. And uh, we have a tree of, I mean, ancient of war over here. Uh... Gonna happen. Human player has cast a rifle army and uh, what's his food limit? He's currently at 47. Nidal player is at 38. Although the Nidal player still does an oh, that's not good. Nidal player just lost his Ancient of War to that to the creeps. He lost it to the creeps. The human player wasn't even there when he lost it. But now the human player is and human player setting up scout towers. He also bought in militiamen or rather peasants with that zeppelin. Human player is gonna try and set up an expansion and this is something that I like to do. This is kind of adding insult to injury. Setting up an expansion at your opponent's natural. Although it is risky, if you have your towers up, it can really, really benefit you. Nidal player gonna try and do a little last ditch effort, but the human player using that goblin zeppelin to take it in uh, take that archmage into it. The Shadow Strike still does remain. Shadow Strike still uh, does damage even when you are in the Zeppelin. Human player knows that, so he unloads it and using the and uses the heal spray with that Alchemist. And Nidal player now blinking away with that Warden. Human player creeping more. Okay, you could do that, I guess. You could creep while the Nidal player is not on you. Here comes the Nidal player once again. Agent is doing really well. Ah, uh, that's a nice little sentry ward over there by Agent. Uh, Starship trying to... Starship is doing all he can. There goes the GG. Good game. Well played by both players. Oh, my Warcraft just crashed. Well, we won't be able to see the stats, I guess. But, well, that was a pretty good game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Subscribe for more. And I believe this is the best out of three. I will be casting the other games as well. And, yeah, that's that's all, guys. See you guys in the next video. Z out. Bye-bye.